What's going on, tribe? My name is Nicole. And my name is Kia, and we are the co-owners of Glamorina. Glamorina is an inclusive women's lifestyle brand specializing in culturally inspired activewear intentionally designed to complement all complexions and body types. Our mission is to provide a safe space in health and wellness where every body belongs. Yes, welcome to Behind Glamorina Moms on a Mission podcast, where we discuss how we balance being successful Black women entrepreneurs, working nine to five jobs, motherhood, self-care, and everything in between. Yes, now before we dive into today's topic, like we have been doing every episode, we want to do a mental health check-in. We encourage you to do the same as you're listening to this episode. So Kia, this week, how you feeling? How's your mental health? Yes, my mental health is pretty good. I think I mentioned this on last week's episode. Um, I'm not liking the cold weather. And then where I live, it's been a bit cloudy. It's cloudy um, for the past couple of days. So uh, that for me, it's I get a little like depressed. I have that seasonal depression. I need mm-hmm. sunshine. I would love warm, but definitely I need the sunshine to make my mood better. So that kind of sucks. However, I'm doing pretty good, though doing pretty good. How about you, Nicole? How is your mental state these days? Yeah, my mental state. I mean, I can definitely agree with the weather. It's like, I think Mm. we all can say when it's, especially if you don't live in a state like California or Florida, where it's always right. (laughs) When it's a cloudy day, your mood is just like, it's inevitable. You're going to be, you know, you're not going to feel as good as when the sun is shining, but absolutely. um, I'm definitely good. Uh, My mental health is improving every day, like trying to you know, remove stress factors and and things like that. So I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy. I'm happy that I am on the up and not (laughs) going down as far as um, my mental health. So, yeah, that's good. That's good. I I love the mental health check-ins. Anyone listening, please make sure you do a quick mental health check-in with yourself when you first wake up, maybe even before you go to sleep, just kind of check in with yourself. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. So on today's episode of Behind Glamorina Moms on a Mission, we are going to be talking about code switching, code switching. What is code switching? Um, Do you code switch at work? Do you feel like you have to change your tone and your mannerisms while you're at work? And finally, can code switching be detrimental to your mental health? So we're going to dive into that today in today's episode. Yep. And so we found this great article from betterup.com that dives into code switching. Um, I'm going to read off their their definition of code switching, but I will say as a disclaimer, I was not familiar with the term. Although Mm -hmm. I am guilty. (laughs) So we'll get into that. But here's the definition according to betterup.com. Okay. So code switching is the ways in which a member of an underrepresented group, consciously or unconsciously, adjusts their language, syntax, grammatical structure, behavior, and appearance to fit into the dominant culture. Mm. So the most common conscious reason for code switching is to avoid validating negative stereotypes about your group or calling unwanted attention to yourself. Mm. Um, It says, unfortunately, this is the most damaging. Yeah, most damaging. I can I can see that completely. So it's the Mm -hmm. kind of code switching that people that leaves people feeling as if they're not acceptable the way they are naturally. Mm -hmm. So they the damage comes when comes from the code shift in behavior and more from comes less from the code, the shift in behavior and more from Mm -hmm. the pressure to maintain an inauthentic facade that mm-hmm. is that is crazy so for anyone who like mm-hmm. me who haven't heard of the term before now you yes. have this definition and i'm sure now you're like okay mm-hmm. <laughs> yes so um i know for sure that coast which i believe originally was like when people who um had dual languages could speak different languages that they would switch from say if you spoke spanish and english you could you would easily switch and you hear that a lot of times from people speaking different languages mm-hmm. sometimes they'll go back and forth between their native language and then say English. Um, so code switching kind of meant that originally. And then I believe the term was, was it changed in a way where it really described, like you said, like this article said, um, where members of underrepresented groups. So we're just going to say black people for, <laughs> for this uh, discussion today. Let's say, for example, black people, when they feel as though 
they have to speak or act or even dress differently for the sake of uh, looking and being professional at work. And so that's kind of where code switching um, that term means now, especially in the black community. Um, And I love this topic. When I read this article, I was like, oh, my gosh, I this is my entire life. (laughs) So we're going to dive into a little bit of code switching and um, just, you know, having a little bit of an open discussion on our experiences with code switching. If you guys have any experiences, please comment in the comments um, when you're listening or watching this video. Um, and also can code switching be detrimental? Can it, can it have negative effects on your psyche? Now that part I had never really considered. Um, but just talking about my experience with code switching, I have, oh, I have lived and worked in predominantly, um, white, uh, you know, jobs and neighborhoods, what have you. So in terms of work specifically, because that's what we're talking about today. Um, do I feel like I code switch? I do. So I do want to put a disclaimer out. We don't feel like there is um, a white talking and a black talking. I don't really believe in that. However, I feel like we do know that um, you speak as a black person. I feel like we speak differently to each other. to to other members of our community than we do to say white people. It's just a different tone. So it's not so much of like how you're saying it, but it's, it's, um, you're just mannerisms, your behavior. So for example, if I go into work, I work in a predominantly white atmosphere. I'm literally the only black person (laughs) there. (laughs) There's maybe one other at a school. Um, so I'm the only black teacher. And when I come in, I'm, you know, good morning, everybody. <laughs> How are you? You know, so again, I mean, I, this is the way I regularly sound. However, it's like, it's very different than when I do see, so I, I'm sorry, I'm not the only black person. There's one other black teacher. When I see her in the hallway, I'm like, Hey girl, I love mm-hmm. your hair. Like we can talk about our hair. It's just, I feel different. And we talk and look at each other. It's a, it's totally different than when I'm around all of the other white people. And I feel as though um, I have to do it because I don't relate to them Mm -hmm. in an aspect of outside of work, like our lives aren't relatable. So I do feel for me personally that when I, as soon as I hit the the doors (laughs) at work, it's a just a different hat. The um, switch, the switch turns on, right? Switch, exactly. I turn the switch on, right? Or turn the switch off. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I will combat a little bit of what you said and speak uh-huh. for a lot of the people that um are in my family or people from neighborhoods that I grew up in because I feel mm-hmm. like this podcast is for everybody. Yes. And I feel like while you're right that it's not um talking white or whatever. Mm-hmm. Technically, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is in our community. <laughs> let's keep it real. It is. It is. Most of our um people are like, "Girl, why are you talking white? Like, why are you talking white?" Yeah, I've been guilty of that because I do code switch in certain environments, and sometimes that that uh switch might still be on when I'm with my family mm-hmm. or my friends. They're like, oh, <laughs> "You forgot to start like that." <laughs> why are you talking like that? But um, <laughs> so that is a thing. We know that in our community that that's a thing. That's what people mm-hmm. say. And Mm -hmm. I just have learned over time because I think for me, the code switching thing started when I went to art school. So Mm -hmm. for college, going to art school and it was uh, not me trying to talk white or trying to be like them. It was more so um, my college professors were all white. There was no Mm -hmm. black professors. And so Mm -hmm. for being an art student, you have to present your work, you have to discuss your work, describe your work and have critiques with your peers, your professors. And my first one, I remember after describing my work, mm-hmm. they were like, huh, what is it? What, what did you say? What? Like they didn't oh, no. understand certain words. So I had uh-huh. to naturally adjust and yes. say things like articulate things a little bit better or um, pronounce or enunciate things a little bit better so they can actually understand me and thus, mm-hmm. like that leads to my grade. If my professors don't understand what I'm saying, mm-hmm. you know, it's so I had to naturally do that. And I, I think it started right. there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that happens in some situations where it's like, you know, as as black people, most of us, we don't really enunciate mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of times. Yeah. So that's the thing, <laughs> too, I think, aside from switching up your tone, 
yeah. enunciating certain words is something we're not really used to because our people know what we're saying. Yeah, I think um, we, I mean, we do. You're right. We do have a, a different vernacular than um, other communities. So and I, and I feel the same way. I mean, I've always been accused of sounding white. And <laughs> honestly, when I hear myself, <laughs> When I hear myself on my voicemail and stuff, I have literally been like, I sound like that. I just because I mean, you know, we we all have grown up in different environments in different areas. Mm-hmm. And so I definitely um, am not ashamed to admit that, like, I didn't really grow up around a whole lot of black people growing up. So, yeah, just how you where you grow up mm-hmm. and who you grow up around affects your behaviors and the way that you speak and stuff. Absolutely. So I definitely, is it possible that I sound white? So for some people, they might listen and be like, how do you code switch? You already sound white. Mm -hmm. So it's not even, it's not just the tone. Cause again, with this definition from betterup.com, the article that we found, it says it's adjusting our language, our syntax, um, behavior and appearance. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of things. I mean, code switching can also be not wanting to wear your natural Afro at work again, because is it deemed professional? So Mm -hmm. the code switching, and I have done this again, because I work with predominantly white people, um, in a predominantly white atmosphere, Sometimes I wear my natural hair out and it's like, oh, you know, I like your hair. And I've gotten I've gotten the people who have touched my hair. I, I, I've experienced that um, a lot of times when I do want to just I don't want to say feel more professional, but it's a matter of like wanting to fit in, mm-hmm. not wanting to stand out. And again, the article says something about, you know, the most common reason why we code switch is to avoid validating negative stereotypes about our group. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the black representation all the time in my um, within my coworkers Mm -hmm. at workplace. So because I am, I'm the the, I'm the token black. Yeah, Mm -hmm. sometimes I don't want to um, I don't want to validate any stereotypes. I don't want to always be like, oh, that's right, girl, because there are times that sometimes it will slip out the way that, again, I talk to my black friends, Mm -hmm. it will slip out. And it's it's like, okay, it, it doesn't sound right here. It doesn't fit in here in this space. (laughs) Yeah, I I really do love this topic because, like I said, while I'm guilty, especially in the workplace, because it's just natural, you feel like, you know, you're going to be well better perceived if you adjust a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. But I've learned over time that I'm not doing that anymore. And I I really want this to be a conversation because I learned this from my old boss who was black. She was one of the few black bosses or, you know, higher ups Uh in our company. And Mm -hmm. then my aunt recently, um, we have to learn how to just be ourselves in any environment. They have to accept Mm us. Um, so it's, it's just like, why do we have to do this? It's just like Mm -hmm. the narrative needs to change. And I am in a situation right now where I'm doing a lot of that code switching and I'm tired of it. I'm like, you know what? (laughs) I don't even need to, I don't even, at the end of the day, I really don't need this job. I can find something else and I'm not going to. Um, I'm tired of doing that. No, if I want to say a certain thing a certain way, or if I don't mm-hmm. want to laugh at your joke because I don't get it, or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? If I don't want to make up a joke to make you entertain, like I'm I'm not gonna do it anymore. Like honestly, yeah. that's how I feel. But I, mm-hmm. I also will say on the hair thing, I do feel the same way. I'm like, I have to wear my hair just straight. Mm-hmm. And that's more accepting. They think I'm prettier. They they think I'm one of them in a sense, or right? I'm more closer exactly. to them. Um, and I'm yes. tired of doing it. Like I've I've debated on. Uh, actually, no, I didn't. I wore braids on camera for one of our meetings. Um, after maybe a month of just all straight hair, this is how they they know me. Mm-hmm. I was like, forget it. I had my blonde braids um, on mm-hmm. Zoom, and the, and I was just waiting for somebody to say something. <laughs> and this one white lady was like, I like your braids, but she was trying to sound cool. Mm. Um, so I don't think that she was like, oh, she's the black girl. I think she was really yeah. trying to like, you know, they embrace black culture at the end of the day. Yes. Um, so I yep. think it was her just trying to compliment it to say like, oh, that's cool type of thing. But uh-huh. that was one step in the right direction. Like, I'm, I don't care if I have these blonde braids that might be might be perceived as ghetto. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, uh, urban, urban. So, yeah, I just think we just need to slowly. I know it's it's hard because uh-huh. we're used to it, but we, we got to uh-huh. try to, you know, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is hard. It's um again, it's a way 
of like wanting to fit in, wanting to be perceived as professional, Mm -hmm. wanting to be perceived on the same level as them. And you don't want to, you know, validate any, the, the ghetto, whatever, Mm -hmm. this, whatever stereotypes that white people have of black people, especially black women. Um, Mm -hmm. you don't want, you, you don't want to come off as too angry because you don't Mm -hmm. want to be the angry black woman. I mean, I think that we consciously and unconsciously code switch. If you work, outside of your home and professional setting or what have you. I mean, I I work at a school, I'm a teacher. So I just think that if you, as a black woman, if you work in a predominantly white atmosphere or workplace, we are constantly code switching. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because again, it's like, I don't want, I want you to take me serious. I want Mm -hmm. you to show me the same grace as you would show anybody else. And I, from experience, I'm not feeling that if I have my hair, or, you know, big earrings or long nails or something like that. It's just, um, it just, from their perspective, I don't think that they perceive it as, again, as a professional. Um, and then you got some of, some of our allies that are like, oh, you know, they get it. They love it. They accept it. But, um, it's, it's just totally different. I mean, I feel the same way when I wear my natural hair, I'm perceived one way when I straighten it, then it's like, Oh, okay. You're right. Like you said, it's like, you're one of us. Right. <laughs> because I think it's easier for them to understand, you know, the problem here ultimately is that they aren't introduced to different cultures. A lot of times there's a lot of, you know, white people that may not really experience a black culture. Mm-hmm. Um, they might not have many black friends. They might just not know how we can change up our hair, how all of these things. So they have stereotypes about us and we don't want to go to work and be like validating the stereotypes, you know, Oh, all black women roll their head, their neck. So you, you don't want to go into work and something happens. You, you know, I've had a, I've had to catch myself like, Oh, don't, okay. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't want to be the angry black woman, you know, yeah. I don't, but, um, that's why I also like this article and we'll be sure to, to link this article um, to the show t- tonight, but I feel like it can't, the article also dives into how code switching can be detrimental to our mental psyche. I never thought that I just thought, look, I want to go and work. I want to look professional. I just don't feel like dealing with these white folks today. So I want to, you know, talk, uh, be whatever I do it consciously. However, the article talks about how this can be exhausting um, it says whether done conscious and t- with conscious intent or habitually, it has been shown that code switching can be a source of frustration, strain and burnout for minorities who recognize the perils of failing to switch a lapse that can lead to negative consequences. So I think I, I can see it is tiring. Like you said, mm-hmm. I'm tired of doing it. I don't want to do it. I feel the same way. I have talked to my black friends of like, I just texted my best friend the other day. She's like, how are things going? I'm like, I can't complain. I'm just tired of being the only black at work because mm-hmm. it's, I, I do get tired of it. I get tired of good morning. How are you guys? And not feeling like I can be my most authentic self. And that's what the problem is when mm-hmm. we code switch is we aren't our, our absolute authentic selves. We're trying to fit into that dominant culture, which in many cases, the white culture. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that we have to do that. I, I do think it it, it has a, a huge impact on your mental health um, mm-hmm. because it's like you're you're constantly questioning who you are or who you should be. You know, is mm-hmm. this is this the right way? Is this this how I should yeah. be? And I don't I, like I said, I'm tired of it. I don't want to do it. I, I actually mm-hmm. just met my company in person um, this past week, mm-hmm. and to really just to see people in person for the first time physically, but then also also to see out of a hundred plus over a hundred people for minorities. Well, for black mm-hmm. people, there's, there's probably one more minority that's a non-black. Um, mm-hmm. But when we, when you look around and you just, you just see, and you just say, gosh, like, why is it so few black people? Yeah. Um, and then I just started thinking about, you know, was it intentional? Are we just the, we just had to, they had to meet the quota and have, uh, you know, four black people just, you know, to <laughs> their investors or, right. you know, things like that. But it is, it is detrimental because you're like, even just being in that room, you kind of feel a little small, a little bit. Cause it's like, yeah, like you're not wanted there. Yeah. Like this place is not meant for you. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, I'm not going to like go into depth, but I, I will say mm-hmm. there, um, of the black people that were there, there was one guy who, um, is black and he is, 
he's not so he's not code switching really like he he's mm. you can tell he's kind of being himself uh-huh. but some of the things he did so i would say white people like to party and partake in things right uh-huh. and what i want to say to this guy is you know keep in mind we can't do the same things they can right so uh-huh. what he's what he his actions is almost like he's going to be reprimanded but if it were a white person they will be mm-hmm. let la- it will be fun all all good you know uh-huh. so certain things we just can't do in the work environment right. that they can do and that i mean right. that goes for any environment but uh-huh. that's another part of it it's like if you don't code switch and you're you're naturally yourself and you're uh-huh. showing off your personality uh-huh. it could get you in trouble um depending yeah. on the extent of whatever you're saying but just like a side conversation where you're you know just being friendly or Mm-hmm. laughing about certain things but yet somebody else could do it and they won't get in trouble and i think yeah. that plays in your psyche too it's like mm-hmm. man, i can't even be myself when i try to be exactly um, and it's interesting because being yourself what well, it's the problem is there's nothing wrong with our authentic mm-hmm. selves the, the hey girl or like however it is that you dress your language your hair however it is it's nothing wrong with that it's beautiful mm-hmm. it's just like you said, when you're in the workplace. So again, I can see how that can lead to burnout because you're constantly almost like on guard. It's like, I got to put this wall, the facade up because if I am my authentic self, I may not be perceived professionally. I also may get in trouble or may you know get reprimanded or what have you because I what I'm doing, another person can do and a, a white person can do and it's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. If I do it and all of us as black people again in any workplace, we have we know, we know what we're talking about. If you do the same thing someone else does, whether it's like how you respond in an email, because things happen at work. We all get frustrated at work, right? Something mm-hmm. might happen, you might have to, you know, have a difficult conversation with a coworker. And especially as the black woman, we have we have to behave and we can't even like use our hands too much like there's so many things that we have to like be thinking don't mm-hmm. do this be like this whatever because if i show anger the way that my white coworker showed anger like how she just did i'm mm-hmm. going to get fired exactly. because i'm going to be the angry black woman i had a coworker one time tell me yeah just just go to the principal and tell her you know i want this other position or i'm not gonna work anymore like girl i cannot do that they exactly because like, okay, she was able to do that yeah we, all, we just there's just because the higher ups of the people that are in those um management positions are predominantly white they're not black people aren't usually hold those higher up titles so you cannot approach them <laughs> like a white person could because again they to me in my experience they've just they're already looking at you like mm-hmm. i'm ready for her to get angry i'm ready like, <laughs> for her to yeah or they might try to they might try to probe you a little bit because they don't want you there anymore they uh-huh. might try to bring sure. that out of you they might be trying to push um, you out a little yeah i Definitely. think this is a good point to make on this topic because sometimes it's not just about trying to fit in it's about saving your job or yes you know what i mean yeah. and I, I think back to a previous company where there were massive layoffs happening Mm-hmm. And we had like this um, company call and the CEO is, um, you know, explaining certain things. And then in the company chat, all of these white people are so bold and like, well, you need to give us this and that. If, if you're going to do this, you need to give us making all these demands. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was just looking to see if any black people put in the chat because <laughs> that's one that could affect your job. Like if, mm-hmm. if you are saying certain things in this chat. They yeah. may target you for the next layoff. And I was like, you know, I, we can't do that. Like the white people, they were really like paragraphs of like all of these demands that they deserve. Uh-huh. And I'm like, if black people do that, we we gone. Mm-hmm. And that's unfortunate. That's that's sad. And it's just unfortunately, that's our reality as black women and black people in yeah you know, predominantly white settings, they, we are very much aware, even though it's 2023, that racism and prejudice and stereotypes still exist. Mm -hmm. And, um, we know, like you said, just to try to save your job. I mean, unfortunately we do have to kind of turn this, you know, we have to code switch. We have to turn it on. We have to turn it off at certain times because we, cannot act and behave the way that our white counterparts can just yeah. again because of racism i mean at the end of the day that's what it comes down to they perceive us a certain way and when we go to work we don't want to be that like right. because what they perceive us and how our authentic selves are are too different right how we are 
with how we speak to each other and stuff. That is not ghetto. It's not wrong. It's not, there's nothing again, like I said earlier, it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that, but they perceive us as a certain way, which is always less than, uh, we're thieves. We might steal something at work. We're going to like, we might, you know, yell at, you know, Katie or Becky or whatever, because so it's just like, <laughs> it's like, it's, 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 a, it's a mental, you know, battle that you're always, you know, you're always like partaking in because you don't want to validate their stereotypes. However, that's exhausting mm-hmm. because like you said earlier, I'm like, I'm tired of doing that. I don't, you want to be like, I don't care what you perceive me to be. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not the angry black woman. I'm allowed to get frustrated or upset at work if something upsets me or something doesn't go right. I don't care. But you can only do that. You can only say, I don't care for so long if you want to work there. Exactly. Because if you become the angry black woman that they've already perceived you to be, yeah. then they're, you, now you got a target on your back. If you if exactly. you try to really, stand, and I'm not saying don't stand up for yourself or don't, you know, don't request, you know, uh, raise, nothing like that. That's not what I'm saying. But we all just know that sometimes there's like a line and yeah. cross the line at work, then they looking at you. Then you got a target <laughs> on your back and that just opens up a whole nother yeah. can of worms. Yeah, you definitely have to be strategic if you decide yeah. to try to be that um, game changer in the company or at your job. Yes. You have to be strategic. Like um, a game changer. Yeah, uh-huh. I mean, it's, it's. I think it's great to stand up for, like during this meeting I was at, the one of the Black girls was like, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we can started something DEI here, like diversity and inclusion and, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of be the voice for black people. And I think that could be great. Like if we start something, they could hire more black people, things like that, Mm -hmm. but you have to be strategic. You can't be, you know, it's, it's just the delivery, unfortunately has to be a certain way. Um, Mm -hmm. but I agree. And I think just to kind of round this um, conversation out, I, I know for me personally, I have been doing my own, what do you call it? I'm taking my own like political stance or my own, um, I can't think of the word. I feel like I'm fighting back, but in my own little way Mm and like fighting against that, Mm -hmm. not wanting to code switch. And I do it by, I do wear big earrings sometimes and they're of Africa or, you know, a black woman. I have even worn earrings that says black power. Now I'm not gonna wear a shirt that says that, but I've worn in my earrings. Or sometimes, like I said, I do wear my natural hair out. A couple of times I have worn an African skirt and it's like they're blown away in a sense of like, uh, it's getting a little too African in there, but I like it because that's my own, my own way to like go against the man or whatever. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like gradually, gradually introducing Uh them to the culture or, um, yes, you know, and, and, and make people comfortable. Yeah. Gradually. Uh huh. Making them comfortable, but also not, but also more so really just me wanting to be more authentic. Yeah. In the small amounts, yeah. you know, and, and again, I can't come in there with my fist up every morning and black power is black history month. You know, I can't yeah. do that, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I could do small little things that's still, you know, something that it's like I'm fighting with within the system. Yeah. It's like, it's gradual out. for you because uh-huh. to, to slowly gradually show your authentic self. But when I yeah. say com- make them comfortable, it's not to, um, uh, bow down to them. It's more so yeah. with anything. It's like, if you're in a new environment, you want to, uh-huh. you want to gradually learn Sure. type of thing yeah. so gradually mm-hmm. making them like understand like okay I, i'm you see me with my straight hair first hey i'm kia this is my straight yeah hair. you're right. getting to know you're open to getting to know me and then you still know me as the same kia but now i'm wearing my hoops i'm still the same person yeah now i'm wearing my afro i'm still the same person so it's just kind of yeah helping them understand us a little bit better gradually yeah uh-huh. Like but yeah, that. so this was a great, great topic. I'm I'm glad yeah. I, I was introduced to the term. Um, I'm sure a lot of us are guilty of it. Mm-hmm. And I think it gives us all a lot to think about how we want to approach this, just making sure we're aware that we're doing it. Yeah. Um, how it affects us in this mm-hmm. just working towards being more of our authentic self in the workplace or wherever. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. All right. This was a great, this definitely was a great discussion and hopefully we'll be able to um, maybe touch on this again at another time um, and maybe get some other viewers. But if you've had to experience, well, 
if you've experienced code switching, if you know that you do that or consciously or unconsciously, um, definitely put your comments. Let us know, you know, how is that experience for you at your workplace? Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel like you have to do it on a daily basis? Is it something that you just don't even think about? And also, do you think are you tired of it? Or do right. you feel like it is detrimental to your mental health? Or do you feel like, look, this is something I can do. I can do it in and out and it doesn't affect me. So we would love to hear from our audience. So be sure um, to our replay cl- crew, be sure to comment and let us know how is code switching affecting your life? Yes, for sure. Thank you guys so much for tuning into today's episode of Behind Glam Marina, Moms on a Mission. We have a passion for building sisterhood through wellness and creating a safe space where all women feel like they belong. Yes. Be sure to visit Glamorina.com to shop culturally inspired activewear that reminds you that you are enough. Stay well. And until next episode, bye.